One of the many things that I think we really do right here at CBT Nuggets is we listen to your feedback. As a result of some of your feedback in the DCUFI course, I added practical nuggets. That's right, no theory, no slides regarding configurations, just practical examples in the data center at the command line. In this micro nugget, let me give you a glimpse of that. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll configure trunk links between an upstream Nexus 7K and a downstream Nexus 5K, and we'll see spanning tree protocol running over these links by default. We'll then go ahead and rip out the spanning tree protocol, isn't that a great set of words, and we'll replace it with Cisco's Fabric Path technology. So let's get started here on our 7K, and let's build some trunk links to our 5K. So we're going to go in, and we are going to... Let's first create a VLAN that we can utilize for our data traffic. And then let's go into the interfaces that we have connected down to our 5Ks. So that's going to be 11 through 18. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set those as trunk ports. We'll go ahead and go ahead and, and, and lock these trunks down to that VLAN we just created. And we'll do our no shut on these particular interfaces. Now we got to run down to the Nexus 5K and create the other side of these trunk links. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and confirm our old school spanning tree configuration. Yeah. And then obviously we'll go ahead and rip and replace with Fabric Path. So let's run down now to the Nexus 5K and create the other side of these trunk links. Okay, so here we are downstream on the Nexus 5K. We'll go into global configuration mode. We will create our VLAN 100, and then we will enter the appropriate range of ports, which on this device is 1, 1 through 8 for our Ethernet ports, and we will issue our switch port mode trunk command, lock down this trunk port with the trunk allowed command, and we will no shut these interfaces. Excellent. Let's head back upstream to our Nexus 7K and take a look at the default spanning tree configuration that results. So here we are back upstream, and we are going to issue the show spanning tree command for our VLAN 100. All right, well, this is what we would expect, right? The default is rapid spanning tree protocol. Now, at a glance, you can see that we are not the root, and that's because we've got ports here that we just configured as trunks that are not in the forwarding state. Yeah, we've got some blocking ports on this particular device. So from a best practice spanning tree perspective, what would you do? Well, obviously you would set this device as the root for VLAN 100. So we could do that by manually setting the priority. So we're getting a little bonus rapid spanning tree protocol review here. We'll go ahead and end this configuration. We will show our spanning tree configuration again and we can see we are converging back to a situation here where we are the root, we can see that our ports are literally converging into a forwarding state, and even with rapid spanning tree protocol, that is taking some time. In fact, we're in a dispute status here. Let's run it again, our show command, and see if we converge. Yep, and now finally we're converged and everything's forwarding. But again, there's some latency there, isn't there? Even with rapid spanning tree protocol, and this is one of the many reasons that we push to new technologies like Trill, or as Cisco would call it, Fabric Path. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our Fabric Path configuration on this 7K and this 5K device. 
Now, the first thing that we're really going to want to do here is we're going to want to ensure that the correct licensing is in place for us to take advantage of this feature. So I'll issue the show license usage command, and we can see that, yes, indeed, we do have the enhanced layer two package in use so that we can take advantage of Fabric Path. Awesome. Well, you remember from our previous videos how we would go about this, I'm sure, right? Very simple. We go in and we issue the feature set command and we are interested in fabric path. So feature set fabric path in global configuration mode. We're now going to go into our VLAN configuration and we are going to say mode fabric path. We're now going to go into our trunk interfaces. That was, let's see, interface Ethernet 1 slash 11 through 18. And we are going to say, hey, hold on, we got a new switch port mode for you, and it is indeed Fabric Path. We'll want to make sure those interfaces are no shut. Yeah, of course, I did that earlier, but it never hurts. And now we're off to the Nexus 5K in order to enact our Fabric Path configuration. Now here on the 5K, I have ensured that I've got the correct licensing installed, so we'll just get going with the configuration here. We'll go into global configuration mode, and here we use the install feature set command, and it is the Fabric Path feature that we want to install in the 5K. Now we have to enable it. So we are going to issue the feature set command and we are going to issue fabric path. Now we need to enter our VLAN. Remember our VLAN was VLAN 100. Under VLAN 100, we say mode fabric path. And now we head to our interfaces. It was one through eight on this device and switch port mode fabric path we'll out of paranoia issue our no shut and now we are ready for what really is the most important part of our video and that is to verify our fabric path connectivity and configuration let's head back north to the nexus 7k so here we go with our verifications. The first one is just to show interface brief. Yeah, if you're to do a show interface brief now, you will see the difference clearly between one of your fabric path interfaces versus one of your access interfaces. There's a actually more direct way to show this if you wanted to just quickly see all of the interfaces that are in your fabric path topology and that's with show fabric path ISIS interface brief. So there we go, we can see those eight interfaces that we configured as fabric path. There's uh, show fabric path, spelling counts, ISIS. And what's great about this is we not only see our fabric path interfaces, but we can get details of the overall fabric path configuration, right? For instance, like the reference bandwidth setting that is being used in the fabric path metric calculation. Now, did we really successfully engage in fabric path with our downstream neighbor? Well, we can see that with show fabric path ISIS adjacency. And yes, we can see we have our fabric path adjacencies with the Nexus 5K that is downstream. Critical. Now, what about fabric path IDs? We allowed those switch IDs to be calculated automatically for us. We can see our local switch ID at 1728. We can see the downstream Nexus 7, uh, 5K, excuse me, at 3377. Finally, we can go ahead and take an examination of the fabric path route information. How do we do this? Show fabric path route. And we can see that in order to reach from our local device at 1728, in order to reach the 
particular switch ID of 3377, we know that's our 5K, we can follow the following interfaces. 11, 12, 13, 14 will all bring us to that particular device. So, notice, as I indicated in our configuration nugget for Fabric Path, where we initially looked at these commands, the configuration is going to be remarkably simple for such a powerful, powerful change we're making in our LAN topology in the data center. Something else, obviously, to note here is the fact that we are indeed shielded from the complexities of ISIS as we utilize Cisco's Fabric Path. Well, I sure hope this video has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.